The topic of this chapter is the price elasticity of demand. In the previous lecture we have seen what an elasticity actually is and that it measures the percentage change of a variable in response to the percentage change of another variable. Now if we focus explicitly on the price elasticity of demand, then the question that we ask is how demand for a good changes if its price rises by 1%. From a mathematical perspective, this means that we want to calculate the two expressions that you see here. Uh, if we have uh, discrete changes, then it's the change in Q in the quantity uh, in terms in percentage terms in the numerator uh, divided by the percentage change in the price of the particular good in the denominator. If we have continuous changes or marginal change basically, then uh, the same expression would be the derivative of the demand level divided by the demand level. So that's the percentage change then in the continuous case divided by the percentage change of the price level. Now the price elasticity of demand depends on the characteristics of the good that we are uh, analyzing. Uh, for example, on how many substitutes there are for this good. If there are many substitutes, then the demand is usually more elastic because I can um, switch to other uh, goods more easily. Uh, and also if the demand is, if the good is a necessary good, then it's more difficult. And that means that the elasticity would typically be lower. Overall, there is a connection to the shape of the demand curve for the goods, as we will see on the next slide. But what's important to note at that point already is that the slope of the demand curve is not equal to the elasticity. Because the slope of the demand curve does not yet take the level of demand into account, so you don't see a percentage change, you only see the, 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 the change um, in absolute levels. Then usually the uh, price elasticity of demand is negative, because if the price increases, you would see that uh, for most of the goods, demand for this good would decrease. So things become more expensive, people buy less of it. However, there are some exceptions, the given goods, to which I will say uh, a bit more later. Now let's give an intuitive illustration for the price elasticity of demand. We have here a standard um, supply and demand curve uh, framework where we have the price level on the vertical axis, the quantity on the horizontal axis, and we have two different demand curves here in the picture above and in the picture below. The demand curve in the picture above is much uh, steeper and the demand curve in the picture below is uh, flatter. The supply curve is the same. The demand curves are denoted by D1 in the upper diagram, D2 in the lower diagram, and the supply curve denoted by S. The supply curve is red, the demand curve is blue. Now we suppose that supply of the good changes. So the supply curve shifts to the right. We get now a new equilibrium. So the old equilibrium was at the intersection of the old demand curve and the old supply curve here. And now the new supply curve is the dotted red line and we get a new intersection, a new equilibrium at a lower price. And this lower price leads to, uh, to an increase in um, the quantity, basically. So quantity increases, the price decreases. Now the same holds true for the below diagram, but here the demand curve um, is a different one. And when the supply curve shifts, we see that the change in quantity is much larger in absolute terms and the change in the price is much smaller in absolute terms. Now this would hint to the situation that here uh, the demand uh, uh, curve is the demand curve for a rather inelastic good and he, uh, for a rather inelastic good, yes, and here it's the demand curve for a rather elastic good. Of course, it depends on the percentage uh, change that we have here, but it illustrates that the, um, there is a connection between the shape of the demand curve and the elasticity. Now let's look at some special cases. The first special case is the one of perfectly inelastic demand. So that would be necessary goods, 
that everybody needs, for example, such as uh, subsistence consumption without consuming it, you would die, or life-saving medicines, and they would be close to perfectly inelastic or demand for these uh, goods, particularly if there are no, not many substitutes that you would have um, uh, for them. Now, if the price of these goods changes, demand will not react strongly. So the price elasticity of demand will be close to zero, which means that epsilon p, so that a percentage change of quantity in the response to a percentage change of the price would be close to zero. Graphically, this would be the case for a vertical demand curve here, this blue line, a positively sloped supply curve. Now, in this case, when supply changes, for example, here it uh, decreases, therefore you would get a much higher price, but quantity would not change at all. So in this case, you would have perfectly inelastic demand. The good is necessary. Consumers don't mind or cannot do anything if the price changes. They still need to buy the good at the same quantity as before. So demand is inelastic in this case. Now let's look at another polar case and that's the case of perfectly elastic demand. This would be the case for goods that have very close substitutes, for example wheat or gasoline. If you have two petrol stations that are next to each other, then one uh, of them cannot just raise the price uh, um, without considering the price of uh, the petrol station uh, next to it, because consumers will typically go to the petrol station that has uh, the lower price, even if it's only slightly lower. Similar story holds true if a farmer wants to sell wheat. Um, wheat is a very standard good, so there it's, it's the same if farmer A sells wheat or farmer B sells wheat, so there is uh, uh, close to zero. Uh, difference in terms of quantity and uh, so on. So if the farmer wants to sell wheat at a higher price than the market price, this farmer will not sell any wheat because um, the consumers would buy um, somewhere else. At the same time, if there is a given market price and the farmer wants to sell at this market price, it will be able to sell um, at the quantity that he or she uh, produces basically. So that's perfectly elastic demand. You would have um, uh, that uh, if you have a slight increase in price, nobody would buy um, your wheat. If you have a slightly decrease in the price, everybody would want to buy your wheat. So it's a perfectly responsive demand and therefore perfectly elastic demand. In this case, the graphical illustration looks as follows. So we have a horizontal demand curve now, and again, an upward sloping supply curve. And now the supply curve changes. So there is this new farmer and uh, the new farmer uh, will be able to sell uh, its wheat if it charges the same price as we had before. Otherwise, if the farmer charges a higher price, it would not sell any wheat. So in this case, the farmer would sell at the same price as the previous market price. And since demand is perfectly elastic, you would have the situation that the quantity consumed expands, but the price does not change at all. So in this case, demand is perfectly elastic um, and the uh, elasticity um, here would basically be infinity. Now, what about cases in between the two extremes? Now, let's look here at the linear demand curve, just for simplicity. That would be the example of Q, so the quantity is 12 minus P, the price. It's a linear uh, demand curve, downward sloping, with a 45 degree slope, basically. So an increase in price by one leads to a decrease in the quantity by one. Now, here it becomes obvious, and it's again important to mention it, that the elasticity is not the same as the slope of the curve. Why? Because if we are at a point where the price is uh, comparatively high and the quantity is comparatively low, then in this case of a linear demand curve, a change in the price induces, is, is, so it is a, it is a rather low percentage change because the price is already high, but it induces a rather high quantity change because the quantity to start with is low. 
That means that in this area, the demand curve is elastic. By contrast, if we start in this area here, then the quantity is high and the price is low, which means that any change in price here is a large price change in percentage terms, and any quantity change is a small quantity change in percentage terms. So in this area here, the demand curve would be inelastic. And exactly at the point here, the price and quantity coincide, we would have the elasticity um, of this uh, good um, would be equal to minus one. So here it would be uh, unit elastic. Now it's important to mention here always that the price elasticity of the demand is typically negative, as I already mentioned before, uh, because the demand curve is downward sloping. So if the price increases, the quantity decreases. How would the demand curve look like if it was unit elastic? So in this case, it would be bulged towards the origin, like it is uh, drawn here. But this is the graphical illustration for a demand curve uh, that has quantity times price is equal to a constant. So this can then be reformulated such that the quantity is the constant divided by the price. And here it's given for a certain uh, level of this constant, A is equal to 10. And then we would see that when the price is high and the quantity is low, the slope is steeper. But if the quantity is high and the price is low, then the slope is flatter. In this case, the price elasticity of demand would always equal 1 at each point along this demand curve. We have seen that the price elasticity of demand can be written in two different uh, ways uh, for a, a discrete change and for a continuous change. And now we see here two other formulations that we can um, use that are often quite useful. The first one here for the discrete um, case is when we reformulate the elasticity that we have as before, where we have the percentage change of quantity in the numerator and the percentage change of the price in the denominator, where we just um, multiply um, this uh, uh, out such that we have the price over the quantity times the change in the quantity divided by the change in the price would be basically the same as this here, just when we solve the um, ratio that we have here, where we have a ratio in the numerator and the ratio in the denominator. When we solve this, we get this expression. And the same we can do for the continuous case but it's even clearer, so we have then the price over quantity and then the partial derivative of quantity with respect to the price. So that's then the partial derivative of the demand curve with respect to a price change multiplied by the price level divided by the quantity level, and that would be the elasticity, which is again just a reformulation of this expression here. In addition, since we have uh, continuous changes here, we can also take the logarithm first and then the partial derivative with respect to the logarithm of q, because then the, the uh, logarithm gives us the slope directly at a certain point, and if we take the derivative, that's basically then the slope at that particular uh, point. And if we divide this by the slope of the uh, price curve, then we get directly the elasticity uh, in this case. And that's what uh, an expression that we often find, for example, when we analyze uh, elasticities uh, empirically by means of regressions, where we regress the logarithm of the quantity against the logarithm of price, and then the coefficient of this regression, the beta coefficient for the logarithm of price, would be immediately interpretable as the elasticity in this case, because it's nothing else than the derivative of the uh, left-hand side with respect to the right-hand side in logarithmic terms. Now we can summarize. The price elasticity of demand measures the percentage change in quantity demanded in response to a 1% change in the price. And this elasticity is related but not equal to the slope of the demand curve. The slope has to be corrected for the level of the price and the level of the quantity such that it measures a percentage change. So therefore, when we calculate the elasticity, we also need the levels of the price and the levels of the quantity to get the elasticity. In addition, for a linear demand curve, we have seen this clearly, 
if we just take the slope, the slope would be constant, but the elasticity is not constant along the linear demand curve. The elasticity would be constant for a demand curve that is bulged towards the origin, as we've seen before. The price elasticity of demand is typically negative, because if the price increases, demand for a good tends to decrease. But there is the exception of given goods, to which I will say more in a later uh, video um, at some point. And typically the characteristics of a good determine its price elasticity. So if a good is necessary, then its demand tends to be more inelastic. If it's a luxury good or not necessary, then demand tends to be more elastic. And another important aspect is whether there are few or many substitutes. If there are only a few substitutes, the elasticity is lower. And if there are many different substitutes, the elasticity tends to be higher. Thank you very much for watching the video and I hope you found it interesting and useful. For more videos on economic content, uh, please visit my channel that you find here to the left. Um, and to the right you see the next video in the series at the top and at the bottom you see uh, the whole lecture in the form of a playlist.